Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm going to ask you if you could keep your voice up. I don't think I heard that. End. Is it blue, the microphone blue there? It is. Thank you. That's much better. Um, Mr. Powell, obviously, you, you know who I am, one of the prosecutors on this case, right? I do. Okay. And uh, Mr. Powell, I'm not even going to sit here and pretend to know how difficult this must be for you. Um, I, I understand you're in the unfortunate, incredibly unfortunate position of being a victim in this case, but also being a fact witness. Uh, I promise to treat you with, with dignity and respect. If, if there's any question that you don't understand, uh, please let me know. If you need a break for any reason, also let me know that as well. Okay, sir? Understood. Okay. Sir, obviously, Sydney Powell is your daughter, correct? Correct. And where did she go to high school? St. Vincent, St. Mary. Okay, and that's here in Akron? Here in Akron, Ohio. Okay. And how, how did you as a family decide that's where she was going to go to high school? We ended up going to St. Sebastian Elementary Middle School, and it was just a natural transition for kids in that district or that school to either go to a another parochial school in Akron. Okay, and, and I think we've already heard you're uh, a Catholic family. Yes. And certainly by all accounts, uh, Sydney at, at St. V's, for short, was in high school, was, was a great student, correct? Correct. Got great grades? Yes. And she also had some extracurricular activities during high school, is that right? She played some sports, yes. Okay, can, can you please tell the jury what those were? Uh, she played soccer and one year of lacrosse. Okay, did she do any, any other extracurricular uh, activities at St. V? Not that I can recall. Okay. And um, she actually graduated with a pretty high grade point average, didn't she? Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm sure that, that made you very proud. It did. Okay. And, um, and forgive me, I, I don't know. Um, was Sydney one of... I'm sorry, let me ask you this way. Mr. Malarczyk said that you have an associate's degree? I do. Okay. And did, did Brenda have any degrees? She had a bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree. Child and degree. early uh, development, child development. Early childhood development. Yes. Okay. So when it came time, you know, as a lot of parents, you know, get there when their kids are juniors and seniors, it came time to discussion for college. Please tell the jury how, how that conversation went, how you decided that, or Sydney decided she was going to go to Mount Union. Can you just tell the jury about that, please? We went on a couple. Uh, college campus tours we went down to Kentucky and Bowling Green and Mount Union but I think you know we both decided that Mount Union was 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 a closer in Sydney like that it was a smaller school and still relatively close to home did you visit the campus with Sydney we did okay and Brenda correct what was it about Mount Union that you all loved just the, the the closeness of it the, 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 it was like a small little community almost. It wasn't a big, big campus where you're just a number. Okay. And that's in Alliance, Ohio? Yes. Maybe about, what would you say, about an hour from Akron or less? less? I'm bad with directions, but okay. yeah, maybe no more than an hour. Okay. So if, if, if in college in Sydney ever wanted to come home, you know, that really wasn't a big deal, it's less than an hour away. It was close, yes. And was, was Sydney excited about going to college? She was. Okay. And what did she want to study? Never really settled on much of anything. Okay. That's not unusual. Some kids don't Didn't know so. what they want to do. Okay. Um, and did, uh, when, she, when Sydney applied to Mount Union, did she get a scholarship? She did. Okay, and do you remember what kind of scholarship that was? I think it was called the Presidential Scholarship or something to that okay. effect. And I know that it's a private school. Um, did she, or you and your, your family, did you get like a break on tuition as a result of that scholarship? Yes. Okay. Was it, do you know, and, I, and I, again, I, I apologize, and I know this is tough, but it's like 25%, 50%, if you could remember? Maybe and I, maybe twenty five percent. I'm not sure. Okay, and I and that's fine. I understand. 
Um, we've also heard about a little bit about this Life 360 app. Did yes. Your, did your family use that app? We did. Okay. Can you, for those in the jury who might not know what that is, can you tell them what it is and what it does? I'm not technically savvy, but it, it seems it, it like it tracks your, your whereabouts okay. with your phones. So at any given time, you might know where 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 Brenda is, where your son is. His name's Andrew, right? Yes. Or, or Sydney is. It can kind of just, you look on your phone, there's a map, and it can kind of tell you where everyone is? General vicinity, I believe, yeah. Okay. And for how long had you had that app? I don't remember. It may be high school. I don't recall. Okay. And it was on everybody's phones? Yes. So Sydney would have started her first year at Mount Union. That would have been the fall of what year, if you recall? When she 18, is it? Okay, fall of 18. Okay. And um, she chose to live on campus, right? Correct. In the dorms? Yes. In that first year, uh, how often would she come home? I don't really recall. I mean, it wasn't that often if I remember, but... Every now and then? Yes. Um, would she come home on when there were actual breaks, like fall break or spring break, winter break? Was that the standard she would come home, or would she maybe come home other times She'd come as home well? during their, the breaks. Mostly just during mostly, the breaks? Most of the breaks. Okay. And how much communication would you have with her, um, with, how much, excuse me, I'll withdraw that. How much com communication would you or Brenda have with Sydney while she was away at college? I can't add Brenda probably a lot, me as a dad, not that much. Okay. So. Brenda maybe talked to her, kept in touch with her more than you did. Yeah, oh, yes. Fair to say? Fair. Okay. And is that because of, again, as we've already heard, how close Sydney and Brenda were? Yes. I mean, it, that is in no way to imply that you were not close to her as well, but sometimes moms are good at some things, dad is good at some other things, right? Fair statement. Okay. So in that first year, um, Sydney's first year at Mountain Union, um, actually, you know what, I'll go back and ask this. As a parent of a college student at Mountain Union, how much information in terms of her grades would, would you have access to or be privy to? I, they, they have an app, but I never really looked at it that much that first year. Okay. And it's my understanding that colleges don't readily give out that information unless the student themselves says it's okay. Correct. Okay. Because at, at that point, they are legally adults, right? Legally. Yeah. So they're essentially um, college, you know, you're familiar with medical HIPAA laws. There's actually college laws as well that say certain information can't be released unless the student gives their okay. Okay. Fair to say? Fair. All right. So you wouldn't have access to Sydney's academic record at that time, would you? Correct. And, and not Brenda either, right? Correct. In her first year at Mount Union, I believe that we're talking 2018 to 2019, um, were you or Brenda aware of any academic problems Sydney may have been having during that first year? No. Okay. Did she ever share with you that she had been having any academic problems? No. Okay. Um, you know, I guess when she came home that, that summer, um, well, let me, I don't want to assume, did she come home after that first year and spend the summer with you? She did. Okay. What did she do that summer? She had a, she got a job. Okay. Where did she work? Uh, the baseball team down here, the Rubber Ducks. The Akron Rubber Ducks? Yes. What did she do for them? I worked in the kids' zone. Okay. And during that summer, did 
again, any share anything about what was going on at school or anything like that? No. So she would have returned, or she did return, to Mount Union in the fall of 2019 to start her third semester or her second year. Fair to say? Fair. Okay. And again, she's still living on campus in the dorms? Yes. And if, if you know, I believe you do, who, who was she living with in the dorms? Lauren Curry was the only one I know. There were two other girls, but I don't know their names. Okay. Um, and who's Lauren Curry? Her best friend from high school. All right. Sydney and Lauren were best friends in St. V? Yes. And they both chose to go to Mount Union and, and live together in the dorms? Yes. And I've also heard they had a suite. Is that, had you ever visited the dorm? Do you know what it? I visited the second dorm once. Okay. Um, and did, did uh, Sydney and Lauren have a room and then these other two girls had a separate room or was it all just one big room? There were two rooms. Two different rooms. Yes. I assume shared a bathroom. Yes. And in that uh, third semester or the fall of her second year, um, were you aware of any academic problems that she was having during that semester? No. Okay. And have you since? come to learn, and I understand you didn't know then, but had you since come to learn that at the end of that semester, and we're talking around December of 2019 when that semester ended, that uh, your daughter became unenrolled from Mountain Union? Yes. But you didn't know that at the time? Correct. Do you remember, um, did Sydney, after the December that semester ended in 2019, did she was there a winter break? I mean, I there don't usually remember. is. Yeah, it sounds like there should be, but I don't. Remember. Okay. Do you remember her coming home for that winter break, like spending Christmas and New Year's with you all? Yes. And did she? share anything about how college was going with, with you or Brenda then? Not, not with me, no. Okay. But Brenda also didn't tell you anything unusual was going on either, did she? Correct. Right. And throughout, um, I guess, those first three semesters, um, her first year and then that first semester of her second year, um, were you and Brenda uh, responsible for her tuition payments? Yes. Okay, and uh, all those payments were made, correct? Correct. And how would you and Brenda make those payments? We had a 529 plan. Okay, and so you had this account that you would pay the tuition from? Yes. Would they be electronically made? Would you send the, the university a check? How would that go? I didn't send a check for the first few. I, it could have been electronic. I don't know. It went through like a... But I'm sorry. It went through like a broker form. Okay. So we're, um, I guess in terms of a timeline, I'm, we're coming to January of 2020 when she would have returned to Mount Union. Did she return to Mount Union in January of 2020? Yes. And in January or even February of 2020, were you aware of any um, issues that were going on with her in, in, at Mount Union? No. And, and did, did Brenda tell you that she suspected anything might be going on? No.
Sir, as we get into early March, what was the, did you have before March 3rd, did you have any information that something might be going on with Sydney at, and Mount Union? The only thing that I knew is when I tried to sign on to the, uh, like their whatever app that they have on the website, it kept kicking me out. The, the, the app that Mount Union had? Yeah, they have like a, like a portal, I think it's called. A portal? Okay, and you would try to sign into that portal and it wouldn't let you in? Correct. Why were you trying to get into that portal? Seeing because the 529 plan didn't cover all the tuition for the year, so I had to make a, a personal check. Okay. So I had to see how much that was. Okay. And um, when you had difficulty logging onto that portal, what did you do? I asked Sydney what was going on about it. Okay, and what did she say? There was a mistake with Mount Union. Okay. And she'd look into it. Okay, and, and, and at that point you had no reason not to trust Correct. What she's telling you. Yeah, correct. And, and, and to be fair, you would always found her trustworthy. Yes. Fair to say? Fair. All right. And, and we all know this happened on March 3rd. What was that a, that particular conversation about the portal and talking to Sydney and saying what's going on? Was that a few days prior to March 3rd or the day before, if you know? I don't recall how okay. long it was before. But just a, a few days before? I don't recall how many days before, but it was before. Okay. Um, before March 3rd, did you become aware, like that portal issue, of any other issues with Mount Union and Sydney's enrollment? No. Sir, again, I, I know this may be difficult, but there are some things about March 3rd that we do need to talk about. So the morning of March 3rd, that was a Tuesday, correct? Yes. And you went to work like any other day, right? Yes. And, and please also tell the jury, where do you work? Akron Steel Treating Company. Okay, and your position there? I'm Vice President of Quality. And, and how long have you had that, or how long have you worked for that company? 28 years or so. And so that morning, what was the first issue that, that came up with Sydney and Mount Union that you recall? I believe Mount Union called me. I They called me and I, the conversation was that Sydney wasn't enrolled anymore. And then I asked for how long, and they said, you have to ask her. Okay. And, and I'm sure that came as a shock to you? Yes. And, and again, they, they said they you have to ask. I know it sounds cold, but they're saying you have to ask her because they can't give you any more information, right? That was my assumption. So when Mount Union tells you she's no longer enrolled, what, do you, what did you do? I don't remember. I don't remember the details of all that. Okay, did, did you uh, call Sydney or try to reach out to her at all? I, I don't think I did, I don't know. Okay. Um, now, at, at some point that morning, I, and I think we may have already heard this, I don't know if we have, but you actually went home and, and, and spoke to Sydney, is that right? Yes. Okay, what prompted you to go home, to, to leave work and go home? Because I saw on the app she was home, which I thought was a little bit early. Okay. The 360 life. The 360 app showed that she was home? Yes. If, if someone on that app it comes home, do you get like a little buzz or notification on your phone? If it's set up, you can. Okay. So did, did you just happen to see that on the 360 app or did it give you like a notification? I might have got a notification, I don't recall. Okay, so you get a notification that Sydney's at home, correct? Yes. And when you, when you see that, you, you go home? Correct. All right, and, and why did you go home? See why she was home. Okay. 
you have any concern for her at that time? Just because Mount Union said she wasn't enrolled, but no, I was just going to go home and see why she was home so early. And okay. And did you take your phone with you when you went home? No. And, and why not? I just left it at work so the 360 app wouldn't show me coming home. Okay. Did you not want Sydney to be able to see that you were coming home? I would imagine that was my intent. Okay. So, it, it, I'm sorry, your, your place of employment, how, how far is it from your home? 15 minutes. Okay. Maybe. So, you, you come home, and, and this is, I think, I'm not going to hold you to exact times, so sometime maybe around 11, 11, 30, yeah, or something I, like that? I would imagine. I don't know for okay. a fact Again, at all. I'm not holding you to specific times, but, um, so you come home at 11, 11, 30, and is Sydney at home? Yes. All right. And... Is anyone else home at this point? No. Did you have a conversation with your daughter at that time? I did. Can you tell the jury what did she tell you about what was going on? From my recollection, it, just, it sounded what I understood is she was still enrolled and it's only been, it was only a couple weeks that she was still going to some classes and still doing her homework on the side. Okay. So she told you she was essentially still enrolled but just having some, some trouble? I don't know if she used the word trouble, but... She, and again, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. You tell me. Yeah, she what, just, what did she say? She was... Again, I don't remember the details, but I remember she said she was still going to some of her classes with her friend Lauren. That we would work it out. Okay. Do you remember telling her, and I know you had a conversation with the police too, do you remember telling her that, you know, you, you can't run away from your problems, you have to face them? I said remember? we'd go through, you guys get through, through this semester, and if you needed to take the summer off or go to, we would work through it. I remember she said, you know, all her friends have their shit together, and she doesn't, and I told her no that's not the, that's not true she said she didn't Sydney said I don't have my shit together but my friends do yeah she didn't know what she wanted to do it sounded like sure do you remember telling her you know let's call the school back get reinstated something along those lines I think I said let's call your mother I'm sorry. I think I said, let's call your mother. Okay, and, and why did you say that? Brenda was better at things like that than me. Okay. And do you mean by dealing with Sydney or the college or both? Probably both. So... Is that when, did, did do you call Brenda then? Yes. Uh, she's, we already heard she was at work at Akron mm -hmm. Children's, correct? Correct. And did you ask her, hey, you know, there's something going on with Sydney and, and at the college, did you ask her to come home? She said she would come home. She said she's gonna talk to Jill and she'll come home. Did you stay at home? I'm sorry, do you need a minute? No, go ahead. Uh, take your time, sir. Okay. Did you stay at home until Brenda got there, or did you leave before she got home? I left before she got there.
So you, you, you went back you went back to work and knowing that Brenda was on her way home? Yes. Did you um, after you left, uh, did you share any text messages with Brenda? about what was going on with the school and, and everything? I don't recall the timing of anything like that. Okay. Um, do you remember um, that while you were at work calling Brenda and she said that she was just pulling into the driveway? Yes. All right. And uh, do you recall at around 1236 that uh, you got a text from Brenda saying that she is waiting for the Mount Union Student Affairs to call her back? Yes. And that she texted that she wanted to know how much was the check that Mount Union is returning. Does that ring a bell? That does. Okay. And do you recall around 1237 that you texted Brenda to check on the scholarship to make sure Sydney didn't lose it? Yes. And then you act you at twelve forty one. Uh, you texted. What did you discuss with Sydney? Do you recall that? Yes. Sir, again, I, I know this is hard, and I'm, I'm sorry you're in this position to have to answer these questions. Did you receive? Do you remember receiving a call from uh, Detective Dees, Ms. Ken Dees, that just testified at 12.51, about 10 minutes later? I remember the phone. Okay. And he told you that there was an incident at your house that he heard over the radio? Yes. And is that when you, um, do you remember at 12.52, at to 1253 trying to call Sydney and Brenda and not getting any answer? Yes. And then at 1254, while you were actually on the phone with Mr. Dees, um, that Sydney called you back? Do you remember? I don't remember. You don't remember her calling you back? No. Okay. Did you, did you remember had that conversation with the Akron police detective? No. I remember talking to Sydney. I didn't know who initiated the call. Okay, and, and I apologize. That. I didn't mean to confuse you. Okay. But you did have a, you had a conversation with Sydney after Mr. D's, Detective yes. D's already called you. Yes. All right. And uh, that's when Sydney told you that Brenda was on the phone with Mount Union? Yes. And that's when you told Sydney that the police were on the way to the house? Yeah. Okay. And that's, according to you, that that's when Sydney got hysterical and said someone had broken into the, into the house? Yes. And then you actually called Detective Dees back to say, that, you know, this is legit, something's going on. You, you told him that. I don't remember that, but I believe it. But I'm sorry. I don't, I don't remember calling him, but okay. I believe it. Okay.
Sir, up until March 3rd of 2020, had, had Sydney ever seen a, a psychologist or a counselor? No. Okay. And up until that point, um, you or Brenda never had any concerns about her mental health? No. To your knowledge, did uh, Sydney ever share with you or Brenda concerns about her own mental health? Not with me. Okay. Did, did Brenda ever tell you that Sydney had shared anything like that with her? No. Sir, thank you. I have no more questions for you at this time. Thank you. All right, Mr. Melarsa. And we heard from Ken Dees how you kind of met. Um, how long did you date before you got married? We got married in November of 96. And was Brenda working at Akron Children's Hospital at that time? She was. And when was Sydney born? you remember Sydney's birthday? 3-21-2000. And you have a younger son, Andrew? Yes. He was born three, four years later? Three and a half, 9 12, 2003. 9 12, 2003. He also graduated from St. B? Correct. He's a student now at Kent State? Correct. Um, let's talk about um, Sydney. We heard that she went to St. Sebastian's for elementary school and middle school? Correct. What kind of student was she? First K through eight. I would imagine it's a standard, standard elementary student. Uh, I'm sorry, that was a bad question. How about her grades? Did she do well? She did well. Academically, she did well. And then um, you guys made the decision to send her to St. V. Yes. Tell us about that. How did? How did you end up at St. Pete? Parochial schools, they go, they do like a, a, a day where they shadow at one of the other parochial schools. And on her list were St. V and Hoban, and she ended up really liking St. V a whole lot more. So it was more family. Okay. And how would you describe Sydney as a kid in high school? Extroverted, loud, introverted, shy? How would you describe her? Quiet and shy. And we heard that Sydney was also involved in some extracurricular. She played soccer at lacrosse. She played soccer at, at St. V for four years, lacrosse for one year. Do you remember Sydney having any concussions as she was playing soccer? Yes. Do you remember how many? I think two. For any of those, if you remember, did Sydney go to the hospital? For I think she help? did. Um, we talked about um, Sydney and her grades. Can I approach? Let me hand you Defendant's Exhibit A. Yes, sir. 
Yeah. Just switch. Yeah. There. copy of that in front of you, right? I do. Okay. I know it's hard to see on the screen, but these look like Sydney's grades, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. Yes. And it looks like maybe the lowest grade's a B. Yes. And if we Look for Sydney's GPA. Um, the second page there, 3.828 or 7.8? 3.8? Did I say that right? That sounds right, yes. Okay. And her ATC score was a 27? Yes. Okay. She was an exceptional student. She was. And when um, you guys were together as a family, did you guys take vacations? What did you do as a family during summer break, during breaks when Sydney wasn't in school, Andrew wasn't in school? Tell us about that. S spring breaks, we just hung out at home and did stuff together. Uh, the, the once that, every summer, though, we'd go on a, on a family vacation, either to Disney or the, the, the beach. Okay. I just want to show briefly for the jury's two photos. Uh, Defense Exhibit B. Can you tell us who are those folks? It's, it's Sydney, Brenda, me, and Andrew. Okay. And Defendants D, that's you. I'm sorry. That's, that's not Sydney me. Brenda. That's Sydney and, and Brenda in the backyard. And that's when Sydney graduated from St. V? From St. V, yes. Could you describe, um, did Sydney have a job when she was working in high school or in early college? She would work down at the, uh, the, the baseball team here, the Rubber Ducks, I believe. And tell us about Sydney's relationship with Brenda. It's almost unbreakable. They really were. They were unbreakable, really close. They were really close. Did Sydney and Brenda argue? No. Did they ever have loud screaming matches? No. Did any any arguments ever any did they ever get physical? No. Was that a part of who Brenda was or could be? Not in the least. Was before March third violence a part of who Sydney was or could be? No. So let's talk about um, Mount Union. Sydney starts Mount Union her freshman year is 2018 to 2019. Sounds correct. And you become aware, you didn't know at the time, but her grades start to slip. Back then? Yeah. I was unaware. Okay. So you didn't know her GPA fell to a 2.2 by the end of her freshman year? No. And you didn't know that Sydney was on academic probation at Mount Union by the time she started um, her second semester. No, I did not. Her second year, I apologize. And you obviously didn't know that Sydney had been expelled in December of 2019. No. Well, I shouldn't say expelled, I should say suspended for academic reasons. I did not know. So Sydney comes home, she's there for Christmas break over 2019 into 2020, and never mentioned any problems at school? No. 
fact, never mentioned that she had been suspended and couldn't go back to Mount Union. Correct. And you were having some issues and some difficulty, as you said, kind of logging into the system? The portal, yes. And you eventually, around March, kind of talked to Sydney about, hey, I've heard that you're not there anymore at Mount Union. In March, yes. And Sydney still denied that she was at Mount Union. I'm yes. sorry, she denied being suspended from Mount Union. Yes. And then you talked about you know, calling Brenda and that uh, phone call that you had. You were there and saw Sydney on March 3rd before she got into the EMS at the bottom of your driveway? Oh, yes. And we saw the body cam of, of Sydney laying there on the driveway earlier this morning. Have you ever seen Sydney like that before? Never. Um, Sydney was taken from your house to Akron City Jail? I'm sorry, Akron City Hospital? I believe they never really told me where anybody was. And at some point she's charged and you posted her bond to get her out? Yes. But Sydney didn't go home from the jail, is that correct? Correct. She went to Portage Path? I believe yes. And Portage Path is a, um, a place where people can go for a 72-hour evaluation. Does that sound right? Sounds. Because once you post bond for Sydney, you're trying to figure out, well, where is she going to be? Where is she going to go? Um, and you know she went from Portage Path to Akron General Medical Center, also called Cleveland Clinic. Yes. And she was there from, I think, March 7th through March 16th. Sounds right. And that was involuntary. Is that your understanding? That is. So Portage Path had recommended that she go into involuntary psychiatric hospital. Yes. And you're aware that their Sydney was diagnosed by the professionals there with schizophrenia. There were two of them that talked to her that I, that I talked to. Okay, so you talked to her treating mental health care professionals? Yes. And Sydney, on March 16th, I think, was released from the psychiatric hospital and went to stay with your mother in law? Correct. And Sydney has been with your mother in law ever since then? Ever since. And you're aware that um, Sydney had to go to University hospitals in the summer of 2020? Yes. Can you tell the jury, why did she go to university hospitals? It was a second uh, opinion for, I guess, at one of the other hospitals. They noticed something on one of her, I'm going to call it a head scan. Like an MRI? I don't know what it's called. <laughs> and we, I wanted a second opinion. The doctor recommended a second opinion. So the other one that was on my insurance at that time was at university hospitals. Okay, so you're obviously trying to figure out what's going on with my daughter. Yes. Right? Is there something wrong maybe with the concussions or did they talk about possibly epilepsy or some other issues? She was on the epilepsy unit, so. Okay, and I think she was there for six days, the records tell us? That sounds correct. And there was, after these MRIs and the testing, University Hospital said it doesn't appear that she's suffering from epilepsy. Correct. And the only diagnosis left to explain her condition was schizophrenia. Yes. So after epilepsy is rolled out, after the diagnosis is made by Saint, I'm sorry, by Akron General Cleveland Clinic. Sydney's with Betsy, she's living with her. She starts to see a psychiatrist. Yes. Do you remember that guy's name? I 
think it was Smartnik. Anthony Smartnik, yes. And you're involved in kind of what's going on with Sydney, making sure she's being okay, making sure she's properly diagnosed and treated? Absolutely. And you're aware Dr. Smartnik independently diagnosed Sydney with schizophrenia? Yes. And also PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder? Correct. And you're aware that um, Dr. Smartnik prescribed some medication for Sydney? Yes. Can you tell the jury at first how did how did that go with Sydney and the medication? I don't understand. Yeah, it's a bad question. Sorry. Um, was she responding immediately with medication? Was it figured out? Was it kind of trial and error? It was a little bit of trial and error. Okay. So trial and error means they would try different dosages, maybe different types of medication to treat her mental illness. Yes. Okay. And after a while, it kind of you saw some stabilization. Yes. Were there times during the last three and a half years where there were breakthrough symptoms, like Sydney was starting to hear voices again, or starting to feel really anxious? That's what she reported to her therapist. Okay. Then her therapist worked with Smart Nick, and they they tweaked something. Okay. They, when you say they tweaked something, you mean they changed your medication? I think they gave her like an extra half a dose of something. Okay. And if you know, did that seem to help? Appears to, yes. Okay. And you mentioned counseling. Um, Sydney was seeing initially um, Deborah. Is it Saley? Saley? Yes. That's pronounced right. And. Then Sydney is now seeing Michelle Ferrand. Correct. And they're continuing, Dr. Smartnick is continuing to treat Sydney for schizophrenia even as we sit here today? Yes. So we had known that this trial was coming up for some period of time. Can you tell the jury what, what you and Betsy and Sydney's doctors tried to do to help her kind of deal with the stress of a trial? They gave her some techniques to help deal with it. They, they uh, one of the smart Nick prescribed a, an anxiety pill to help with that as well. So you probably know Brenda and Sydney better than anybody on the planet. I would think so. <coughs> You know what type of um, person Brenda was and the type of person Sydney is? Do you believe for a second that Sydney would kill her mother because of an argument? No. I'm going to call the objection. I'll allow it. No, I do not. Thank you, Mr. Powell. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? No, you're right. Okay, Mr. Powell, you can step down, so 